Right now at five, the fight against COVID becomes an all out political fight. If you're coming after the rights of parents in Florida, I'm standing in your way. I'm not gonna let you get away with it. We are working closely with the Florida, uh, Florida public health officials and the governor's team to see if we can uh, send a team down there to help address their needs. As local hospitals sound the alarm about the fight here at home. The only thing we can hope for is that this, uh, this uh, surge that we got going on, it really peaks out of here pretty soon, and then we get back to a, a more normal environment. Tonight, the real impacts of the coronavirus summer surge. The greatest impact is seen in hospitals across the state of Florida. While many are not at their peaks, they are filling up fast and fighting staffing shortages. Here's the headlines tonight. The Department of Health and Human Services reports more than 12,400 people are hospitalized with COVID-19. The CDC reports nearly 17,000 more cases of the virus and 140 more deaths across Florida. We have CBS 4 News live team coverage of the summer surge beginning with Peter Dench live in Hollywood. Peter. Well, Elliot, we learned some new information today during a roundtable discussion between Governor Ron DeSantis and hospital CEOs from around the state. Here in South Florida, they said that the hospitalization numbers are at a manageable level, but it's much worse situation as you go further north, particularly to areas like Jacksonville. Meanwhile, the surge in cases is prompting hospitals to make some changes. The Memorial Healthcare System says as of next Monday, it is suspending elective procedures and surgeries at its six hospitals. We are seeing uh, a surge like we've not seen before. We have more patients in the Memorial Healthcare System hospital beds than we've ever had before. This is new video from inside a Memorial Healthcare System COVID ward. The highest number of COVID patients was still last summer. However, the numbers are rising and it's pretty sure that we are going to surpass those numbers. Our peak last summer was over 600. We're at 537 today. It means a third of the patients in the Memorial Health Care System have the coronavirus. In order to accommodate this, we have actually opened up over 250 additional beds. The Jackson Health System is also making changes. We are looking at maybe reducing some of our electives right now. We stopped our vis uh, visitations um, and because we want to make sure we don't spread it. The Broward Health System is expanding services, says CEO Shane Strom. We've set up additional rooms and bays where we can bring people in right away. Those who are unvaccinated, we're seeing about five to seven days. The best results that we're seeing is those that test positive and come to us right away. Jackson Health System CEO Carlos Magoya reveals he is coping with serious staffing issues. We're seeing a lot of our nurses taking those temp jobs and going around the country where they're getting two or three times where they get paid. And we're bringing in new people. We're working also with the schools, by the way, longer term to make sure we accept as many people as possible in the nursing schools. The Memorial Health Care System is seeing the same problem. Uh, the numbers of staff uh, that we require is staggering, and we are having trouble getting those staff. We are bringing in staff members from around the country. Uh, paying a premium for those people to come in. According to the state, the number of COVID-19 hospitalizations in Florida now involve 12,408 inpatient beds. But Magoya says the peak of the crisis could be approaching. We're saying one to three weeks, but who knows what those forecasts look like. So we're preparing for the worst. Now, Dr. Knapp of the Memorial Healthcare System says 96 to 97 percent of the system's COVID patients are unvaccinated. He says there is an increased demand for oxygen, but right now supplies are adequate. Meanwhile, Governor DeSantis said yesterday that he expected hospitalizations to drop in the next few weeks. We're live at Jackson Memorial Hospital, Peter Nanch, CBS 4 News.